Welcome riders to the next generation of e-bikes. We know you're excited and ready to put it to the test. However, before you push it to the limits, you might want to know the basics, like how to set up the display and its operation. In this video, I'll explain how to read the KT LCD 8S display, how to get the most out of your electric motor, and how to set up specific parameters. You can fine tune your bike in just a few minutes and you should be ready to go. Right here in the center of the handlebars is the 96 by 68 millimeter LCD screen. And you can see the operating controls are off to the side. We have up and down keys separated by a power button. You'll use these controls to navigate the display screens and make all your adjustments. Because our e-bikes are meant to handle the most extreme environmental conditions, this display and its connector are waterproof. This feature helps ensure the e-bike is fully operational regardless of onside weather. So bring on the rain, mud, sleet, or snow. You can still reach your destination. Just be careful out there, riders. Simply press and hold the power button to turn the display and motor on or off. If the vehicle is idle, the meter will shut off automatically to save power. If you press the up button after turning it on, the backlight will turn on. That setting is adjustable and I'll show you how to do that soon in the settings section. If you hit the power button once, you'll notice that the display screen does change up just a bit. This screen shows you your average speed and odometer. Then, if you press the power button one more time, you get to a third display screen that shows you your throttle is engaged. Once you start riding, the screen will automatically return to the original setting. You'll notice there's a lot of information packed on this screen. Let's quickly review what all these values and signs mean. At the top, you have your battery life in an easy to read format. There's a real-time battery voltage readout next to that battery display symbol. The next marker on this top line only pops on when it's in use, and that'll be your cruise control display. Yes, this bike comes with cruise control. More on how to engage it in a bit. Of course, you'll need to gauge your speed. This is front and center like most vehicles. The intelligent display section shares the current environment and ambient temperature and tells you the wattage consumption of your motor, your distance traveled, and your current trip. If you want to reset your trip meter, simply hold the up and down buttons simultaneously until the numbers begin to blink. Then hit the center power button and the numbers will reset. The number off to the left side of the screen indicates your power assist level, or how much extra push you get from the motor when riding. A number 1 shows the lowest level of assistance, and 5 the highest. Now depending on where you live and ride, you may need to adjust the top speed capacity. To do this, we need to change the settings. Go ahead and turn the display off. Then, turn it back on. Within 5 seconds of turning it on, hold the up and down arrows simultaneously for about 2 seconds. You'll notice the max riding speed number flashing. You can use the up and down buttons to set the max speed you want to have. So if you're in a city setting and need to watch your speed closely, you can set it accordingly. And if you're out riding off-road and want to see how fast you can go, you can do that too. The default is 25 kilometers per hour. Once that speed is set, if you continue to press the power button, you will toggle through various setting options. While many of these settings are formed through the factory and don't need adjustments, there are a number of them you can customize to suit your needs. Simply keep pressing the power button to scroll through the options until you get to one that you want to change. After speed, dim pops up, which refers to the tire diameter setting. This is one of those factory settings I mentioned, so simply scroll past this option. But the setting to adjust your readings from metric to imperial is right after that. Use the up arrow to scroll through the options and choose the readings that work best for you. Every combination is available here, so pay attention to what you choose. The next setting you may want to adjust is the P3 setting. Your options here are either 0 or 1. This setting adjusts your pedal assist to your power ratio. Setting it to 1 gives you full throttle all the time, while setting it to 0 adjusts your throttle based upon your pedal assist level, with less throttle at level 1 and the most at level 5. C3 is another adjustable setting you'll want to know more about. This setting determines how much pedal assistance you get upon starting the bike. Zero being no pedal assistance upon startup, which is helpful for safety's sake, and up to five. 
If you set it to eight here, the bike will automatically revert to the last pedal assist level you used with the bike, regardless of the number. C4 adjusts your level of throttle. Setting it to zero allows your full throttle power and changing it to one limits the throttle to about six kilometers per hour until you use pedal assist. Once you start pedaling, your throttle will kick in. We recommend setting this at zero. That way, you have more manual control of throttle and won't get surprised as you change pedal assist modes. C5 limits the power from your battery through the current settings. This is automatically set at 10, giving you the most power, and the lower numbers limit your power. Reducing the power here can save battery life, but will reduce the overall power output of the motor. This table highlights the current reduction determined per level so that you know. C6 is that backlight brightness setting I mentioned earlier. Level 5 is the brightest and level 1 being the dimmest. Easy enough. C7 is cruise control function. Options are 0 or 1. 0 is off and 1 is on. To use cruise control while riding, hold the up arrow when you reach your desired speed. The cruise control indicator will show up on the screen and you will no longer need to pedal or throttle to maintain speed. To get on of cruise control mode, you can tap the brakes and throttle or press and hold one of the arrow buttons. C8 offers the option to show the motor's operating temperature. Now not all bikes come with a motor temperature sensor, and if yours does, you can set this option to 1 for on. And the display screen will let you know what your motor's temp is at any given time. C9 is your password setting. This feature ensures that nobody can hop on and ride your e-bike without entering the correct password. However, if you forget your password, it isn't easy to work around it, so be aware. There's a three-digit password with almost a thousand combinations. Leaving this feature at zero leaves the password off, while one turns it on, and you can set it. To select a specific number, use the arrow keys to go up and down and the power button to switch numbers. Hold the power button down to save. C10 is a factory reset option, just in case you find yourself in need of it. The next adjustable setting is C12, which is where you can alter the battery's voltage cutoff, also known as when the battery dies. The number 4 here indicates the default value, at which the battery cuts off. While this is adjustable, we recommend leaving it here at 4, which cuts off the voltage at 40 volts for our 48 volt battery. Here's a copy of the table in the manual so you can see how to adjust it higher if you'd like. If you want to keep your battery happy during its life, we recommend setting it to 41 volts. C13 is for regenerative braking, meaning the motor will help you brake. This provides a more powerful braking system, but also negatively affects the battery and motor, so keep that in mind. This section has five levels, and the recommended value for this setting is one. If your battery happens to have a BMS function, you need to disable this feature entirely. You can call our technical assistance representatives anytime to walk you through that process. Almost all of the L settings are configured from the factory and do not require adjustments on your end. The exception is L4, where you can adjust how long the display stays on when the bike is not operating. The default here for that is number five, which indicates five minutes of delay time and goes up to 120 for a delay time of 120 minutes. So that's it riders. I hope this information was helpful and gets you excited to find out what your new e-bike can do. Regardless of the circumstance, do not hesitate to reach out to our product tech support team if you have any questions about your new e-bike. Not only do you have a full one year warranty on all bike components, but you also have lifetime technical product support available to you.